Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, today, we're going to continue our talk um, about computational complexity and measuring the time complexity of algorithms. So to start, uh, let's recall bubble sort. So again, this is a section on computational complexity. <clears throat> And let's look at uh, bubble sort. So let's write down the pseudocode first. So let's say a list of Input is a list of n numbers. N numbers. Output. Is going to be um, elements of L in increasing order. And now um, the algorithm is going to be um, so for i equals one to n minus one for j equals one to n minus i if a j is greater than a j plus one then we're going to swap a j and a j plus Okay, and then after this process completes, we just need to return L. Okay, so um, the, I guess the problem we want to look at is maybe so. Um, give a time complexity. Uh, estimate um, let's say in terms of comparisons so these are boolean comparisons for bubble so basically what we need to do is we need to determine in the worst case how many boolean comparisons will occur when bubble sort runs okay so okay let's think about this so the way i like to do this is i start with if I have a for loop, I'm just going to start and say, okay, what happens when i is equal to 1? Okay, so if i is equal to 1, we enter n. And then we have to say, okay, for j equal to 1 to n minus one. Okay, so now we have another for loop that we have to consider, right? So then what do we want to say 
we have a, a Boolean comparison here, right? Um, so let's start with j is equal to 1. So again, this is like inside that first for loop, and this is inside the second for loop. Um, so then we have this comparison. A1 is that bigger than A2? So this is like plus one comparison at that moment right there. And then um, because we're in this for loop, we also have, it's not explicitly written here, but it's written inside the for loop. Um, we wrap back up and then we say, um, is J, uh, greater than n minus one. So that's plus one more comparison. All right, but then, so we increment j. So now j is equal to one. Okay, so, oh no, no I'm sorry. j is equal to two. And then we have to ask ourselves, is A2 greater than A3? So this is going to be another plus one comparison. You see that, right? And then we have to ask ourselves, is J greater than N minus one? So that's another plus one comparison, Boolean comparison. So it looks like for J is equal to one, we have two comparisons. For J is equal to two, we have two comparisons. So let's say J is equal to one, we have plus two comparisons. J is equal to two, we have plus two Boolean comparisons, dot, dot, dot j is equal to n minus 1, we have plus 2 comparisons. So in this for loop right here, how many Boolean comparisons total are we going to have? We have 2 for j is equal to 1, 2 for j is equal to 2, 2 for j is equal to n minus 1. Somebody speak up. Anybody take a guess at how many Boolean comparisons for this for loop right here? It's right here. Two for j is equal to one, two for j is equal to two, two for j is equal to n minus one. So how many total? It's three in total. What was that? Is it three? Well, Think about it like this. So when j is equal to one, we already have two comparisons that have been made, right? We check to see if that's true, and then we check to see if j is greater than the, the end of our for loop, okay? So we already have two here, and then we increment j to be two. And we check again this Boolean comparison and then we check to see if j is greater than or equal to the end of the for loop. So we have, again, plus 2. And we keep on going until we reach the end of the for loop. But at each step, we're doing plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, all the way to the end. So what does that mean? It means that how many 2s do we have here? One, two. We have n minus one twos, right? So <clears throat> it looks like it's going to be two times n minus one total Boolean comparison. Two times the total number of times you do. It's just the multiplication principle here. Two there plus two there plus dot 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 plus two here 
Altogether, you have n minus 1 twos. So what that means is that <clears throat> when i is equal to 1 and you go into this for loop here, you're going to have 2 times n minus 1 comparisons. Now for each one of these j's, you have two comparison, and there's a total of n minus one of them, so you're going to have a total of two times n minus one comparisons. But that was just for i is equal to one, okay? Now, what about i is equal to two? Oh, almost forgot. So inside that for loop, you have that many comparisons. And then when you exit out, you have to ask yourself, is i uh, greater than n minus 1? So you can have a plus 1 comparison there. So all together, so it's like plus 1 comparison. So it looks like all together, when i is equal to 1, we have 2 times n minus 1 plus 1 Boolean comparisons. This is for when i is equal to 1. Okay. So now i is equal to 2. But i kind of controls the second for loop, so now it's going to be for j equals 1 to n minus 2. Now, as before, for each of these j's, we're going to have two comparisons. We're going to have this Boolean comparison, and then you have to check to see if j is greater than n minus 2. So for each of those j's, we're going to have two comparisons. So inside the for loop, we'll have a total of 2 times n minus 2 comparisons. And then when we exit out of that for loop, we have to check to see if i is greater than n minus 2. So this will be a plus 1. So all together, we have 2 times n minus 2 plus 1 uh, comparisons. And this is for i is equal to 2. So notice here that for the index i, that goes right there. And we do that for each of these i's, so eventually we're going to have to add up those comparisons to those comparisons to those comparisons, so forth and so on. So if we look at adding all those up, um, what are we going to have? So for i is equal to 1, for i is equal to 2, all the way i is equal to n minus 1. So the total number of comparisons is going to equal 2 times n minus 1 plus 1 plus 2 times n minus 2 plus 1 plus dot 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 plus 2 times n minus the very last i, which is n minus 1. Plus 1. 
So where does this sum come from? How did I get, get to this? Well, here, this is for i is equal to 1. Here, this is when i is equal to 2. And then here, this is when i is equal to n minus 1. And the way that I broke this down is that I just looked at, the, so for each i, I paused, and then I did an analysis for all of the j's with, with respect to that one fixed i. And I saw that when i was fixed at 1, I had that many comparisons for this for loop. When i was fixed at 2, I had that many comparisons. And then I generalized to say that this is like, that's your i right there. Okay. So let's see if we can figure out a formula um, for this sum. <clears throat> I honestly don't see it off the top of my head, but that's going to become. So let me just write out what this sum is. Um, so this is the sum. i is equal 1 to n minus 1 of 2 times n minus 1 plus 1. Oh, no, sorry. This is minus i. Oh, and you can't see it, but this index starts at 1. If I can bring it up a little bit, i is equal to 1. So that's what the number of comparisons is. Um, I still don't see what this formula is going to equal. It is a, it is a formula, but I would like it if it was just like a single expression. So. Um, oh, wait a minute. Um, I'm just going to see. Okay, so maybe 2n minus 2i plus 1. Um, Still don't see it. I'm going to have to erase some things to figure out if this, I'm pretty sure it will. Um, in fact, I know it will. Uh, I'm going to have to erase some things up here, but just have this somewhere on your paper so you can compare it to what I'm doing over here. So I'm just going to rewrite this over here. So uh, number of comparisons for a bubble store is the sum Okay, so um, I'm going to spend maybe a minute just trying to figure out a closed form for this sum. And if I can't, because uh, I don't want to run out of time, what I'll say is that this is at most some function, which gives me a big O estimate on the number of uh, uh, simple comparisons for a bubble sort. So let's just play around with this sum. So if n was equal to uh, 2, 
then this sum is just, I'll call it C. So if n is equal to 2, this is the sum from i is equal 1 to 2 of 2 times n minus i plus 1. So then i is equal to 1. So we have 2 times 2 minus 1 plus 1 plus 2 times, oh no, it's, if n is 2, we're only going to 1. So it's 2 minus 1, which is 1, so that's it. So 2 times 1 plus 1 is equal to 3. Oh, okay. So <clears throat> if n was equal to 3, then what is this sum? So it's going to be 2 times, so 3 minus 1 plus 1 plus 2 times 3 minus 2 plus 1. So what is this? Because it 3 minus 1 is 2, so 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, 3 minus 2 is 1, 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. Oh, I think I see what's happening here. So let's just do one more to make sure. So this will be 2 times 4 minus 1 plus 1 plus 2 times, again, I'm just plugging into this, this summation here, 4 minus 2 plus 1 plus 2 times 4 minus 3 plus 1. <clears throat> um, so, so 4 minus 1 is 3, so 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5. So 2 times 1 plus 1. So what's happening here is that each of these terms becomes an odd integer. So 7 is uh, 15. Okay, um, I think I, I figured out the formula now. So it's the basically this is going to be the sum of the first odd integers. So less than uh, so if n was two, you sum so three. Um, if n is equal to three, then you sum. Uh, 5 plus 3, so those are the two odd integers larger than 2. And n is 4, you just 7, 5, 3. Notice that these are, and if you did n is equal to 5, it would be 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9. Right? So, this is equal to um, n squared minus 1. This is equal to n squared minus 1. This is equal to n squared minus 1. So, I, so if n is equal to 2, 2 squared is 4, minus 1 is 3. When n is equal to 3, 3 squared is 9, minus 1 is 8. When n is equal to 4, uh, n squared is 16, minus 1 is 5. So this is actually equal to n squared minus 1, or I claim it is. Um, I don't know if uh, your previous instructor covered this topic, so I'm not going to go over it. 
but this could be proven by induction. Did your previous instructor ever mention anything about induction? Someone let me know. In this term right here. If he didn't, it's okay. It's not entirely required for this course, but I'm just curious if y'all did go over induction. Okay, then I don't need to cover that. I just hope that you see the pattern that if I plugged in n is equal to two, I get three. I get n is equal to three, I get five plus three. n is equal to four, I get seven plus five plus three. And the pattern is three, eight, 15. If you did the next one, um, I'm pretty sure it'd be 24. And if you did the next one, it would be 35, I'm pretty sure. And if you look at the pattern, you just look at n, and then you see that it's gonna be n squared minus one. Okay, so. So what have we, what have we figured out? Um, so if I write this down formally, I can say something like, uh, so maybe if f of n is the number of comparisons um, used by the bubble sort algorithm um, on a input list of n numbers then um, f of n is going to be equal to n squared minus 1 now, this is a polynomial, okay? And polynomials have order, uh, um, the degree of the polynomial. So, uh, I can say, like, so the complexity of bubble sorts is big data of n squared. Another way of saying that is i.e. bubble sorts has order n squared. Okay, so this was, um, I, I suppose, a rather involved uh, analysis of the bubble sort algorithm. Okay, we had to break down each for loop and look at how many comparisons were happening at each step of the of each for loop, right? So in general, um, when you have nested for loops like this, you're going to get some, uh, like, like the number of for loops that are nested, so if you have two for loops, one nested in another, you're gonna have something like n squared order. If you have a, a for loop inside of a for loop inside of a for loop, you're gonna have something like n, squ n cubed order, okay? or n-cubed uh, comparisons. Now, 
Again, we did this in terms of the number of comparisons. You can also do this in terms of uh, comparisons, um, swappings, so like interchanging elements, um, addition. Um, but in any, any one of those scenarios, no matter how many of those simple uh, atomic operations you use to measure the comparators, use to measure the complexity of this algorithm, it's going to roughly be something like order n squared. Now this function may differ, may differ by like some constants or something like this, but eventually the order will be n squared regardless of how many operations you choose to use to measure the complexity. Okay. And I, I guess here I should say can be proven by induction. And induction is just a technique for proving uh, closed formulas like this. Okay. So let's go ahead and erase this now. Okay. Um, I guess that will be it for today. Um, I do have a doctor's appointment here shortly, so I think that'll be it for today. Um, now hopefully, I can post. Um, another video on my YouTube channel, not just this one, but maybe I'll record another one on looking at the complexity of matrix multiplication, vector multiplications, things like this. Yeah, because these are all important things for computer scientists and data scientists to know. Okay, um, are there any questions? Okay, well, I guess that'll be it. Everyone stay safe, and I will uh, see you next week. Um, and if I post the, the makeup exam um, covering the same chapters as the first exam, uh, I will give, you, uh, give everyone a heads up on Blackboard, and um, you'll, you'll have some time. Um, your second test will probably, so for my this class, the Tuesday, Thursday, um, it will probably have to be uh, not next week, but the week after that. Because I need to review a bunch of topics with you um, and have like a, a thorough test review. Okay. Okay. So um, again, I'm going to stay safe and I will post this video to my YouTube channel.